Word. Romania was a dead end. You're saying that he lied? Place is real enough. Deserted. But we found no trace that your man was ever there. Or anyone else, for that matter. Someone erased his steps. Hmm. We'll keep digging, of course. But frankly, it's as if the Earth just spat him out. Are you still determined? Does it matter? I was told there'd be no second chances. Don't believe everything you hear, Miss Burnwood. My decision stands. Very well. I'll be watching. I just got word. Romania was a dead end. You're saying that he lied? Place is real enough. Deserted. The final test is based on an authentic 1979 mission. The high point of training Director Soda's career as an active agent. The target was Jasper Knight, a famous US chess master exposed as a Soviet spy. Soda's caught up with Knight at a military airfield in Cuba and eliminated him against all odds. This will be your objective as well. Now listen carefully. ICA exams aren't normally this difficult. Not only was the airfield a virtual fortress, but he even added additional guards. Sodas wants you to fail. He considers you a threat, and this way, your unfortunate exit from the program won't raise any eyebrows. Well, if he thinks we're bowing out, he is sorely mistaken. Good luck, Initiate. Jasper Knight is leaving Cuba on a Soviet fighter jet, but first he needs to test the jet's safety features. Huh. Say you could somehow tamper with the ejector seat mechanism. You could presumably get Knight to trigger his own demise. Hmm. That might just work. Right. Let's get you inside. You'll need a fitting disguise. Hmm. A guard uniform should do nice. See. But you'll need to draw him out and isolate him. Cash is obsolete. So, 
This uniform should provide access to the hangar. Good job, Anisha. In order to make adjustments to the jet and perform the role of safety inspector, you're going to need a mechanic's disguise. Perfect. Now be gentle. He's an actor. Now to set the trap. The ejector seat mechanism has been disabled. You may need a tool to re-enable okay. it. Good work. Are we clear to go over the safety protocol? Yeah, go ahead. I disabled the ejector seat mechanism. Good man. And now, to confront your target. Knight's office should be somewhere on the first floor. Well done, Initiate. I dare say this is an accident waiting to happen. Jesper Knight, we gotta go over the safety protocol. Follow me, please. Ugh. Must we really? Is it dangerous? Well, it must be, mustn't it? Why else would there be a safety protocol? I'm not crazy about airplanes. Is it going to do that thing where it flips on its head? I don't like that one bit. Not one bit. Don't worry. You're in good hands. Um, this way, please. So are we doing this or what? He does prattle on, doesn't he? Uh, you. Anyway, you're almost there, What's initiate. The All you need to do is read him the instructions in the manual by the jet, and Knight will take care of the rest. Boy, is he in for a ride. I think you lost him. Better double back and fetch him again. Mr. Knight. We did some readjustments to the jet, and we'll need to do another safety check. Is this strictly necessary? Well, 
very well. Jesper Knight, we gotta go over the safety protocol. Follow me, please. Huh. Command, area is really? clear. Please advise. Over. Tonight, climb in the cockpit, please. Uh huh. All right. Easy. One, one step at a time. Step one: strap yourself in. Step two, locate the ejector seat handle. Uh, yes, we found it. Step three, pull the ejector seat handle. Right. Here it goes. functioning jet. Good thing you didn't stop this parachute. Anyway, you did it. Excellent work, Initiate. Bet Sodas didn't see this coming. Now stay calm and head towards an exit. Congratulations, Agent. You are cleared for field duty. I hope you know what you just did. The chopper leaves at dawn. Now get out of my sight. So what happens now? You go back into the world, disappear, stay on your own and on the move. When we need you, we will contact you. And so does. He played his hand, and he lost. He cannot touch us now. <laughs> Still, I can't believe we beat him at his own game. If you know your enemy. <laughs> Quite right. 
I should tell you, the trail went dead after Romania. Our team found no records of any kind, no name, nothing. I think they called me 47. That's not a name. So make it one. All right. Agent 47. Consequences. I have felt the cost. That's what defines me. Agent 47 and Diana Burnwood are the world's top assassins working for the ICA. Unknowingly, they have been hired by a shadow client to target a number of operatives of Providence a secret organization working in the highest echelons of power. Providence's controller, the Constant, approaches Diana and makes her a deal. Eliminate the Shadow Client and learn about 47's past. But when 47 discovers that the Shadow Client is Lucas Gray, his lost childhood friend, he and Diana switch sides to fulfill an old pact. Destroy Providence. Together, they managed to capture the Constant, forcing him to reveal the identities of the three Providence partners. Eliminate them, and the war would be over. However, the Constant has an ace up his sleeve. Look closer. In the shadows. Behind the everyday world. Beyond the headlines and the seats of power. A hidden hand. A kind of company known as Providence. To it, we were just assets to use and throw away, to do the unthinkable, the unforgivable, and it never gave us a second thought until now. After decades in the shadows, we are fighting back, me and 47. Much has been lost, but we are closer than ever. We trapped the Constant, Providence's chief controller, and finally learnt the names of its three partners. 
In their downfall, we lay the past to rest. And, just maybe, look towards the future. 37. It's time. Partners are down there. You know, I never planned this far ahead. You never do. I see someone got his memory back. Wait, is that a beacon? <laughs> what the hell? Base. Alexa Carlisle's helicopter just took off. Confirm target locations, over. Diana, what's the status? Right. We have a situation. Carlisle has left the building. And I think I know why. The Constant has escaped. He persuaded one of the sailors into setting him free. And since then, he's been seizing control of Providence assets and resources. I can only assume Carlisle is rushing to contain the damage. If she slips away again... We'll keep track of her. Make sure she doesn't. Meanwhile, the plan stays the same. Your destination is the Scepter, the world's tallest building where the partners are laying low, courtesy of their host, Sheikh Omar Al-Ghazali. Marcus Stuyvesant is fifth generation old money. His family made its fortune in real estate and banking and were at one point the chief landowners in New York. Carl Ingram is a powerful Washington kingmaker whose family grew rich selling gunpowder during the American Civil War and later established a globe-spanning empire in oil, coal, and steel. Both families long since retreated from public view, but their quiet dominance endures to this day. Now, the partners likely suspect that we're coming, so Mr. Gray will infiltrate building controls and disable all electronic doors and elevators. Stuyvesant and Ingram are about to find they have nowhere left to run. Right. This is our moment, 47. Providence ruined our lives with the flick of a pen. Today, we return the favor. Happy hunting. Welcome to Dubai, 47. Today is the inauguration of the Scepter, and the ceremony is well underway. You will find Marcus Stuyvesant near the building's signature art installation. While a paranoid Carl Ingram has ensconced himself in his penthouse suite, security on highest alert. Mr. Gray is already in position and ready to assist. Good luck, 47. 47. Come in. 47, do you copy? I'm here. Are you in position? I'm heading towards the point of entry. Good. Get back to me when you're there.
47, use your camera and scan the lock, will you? I think I can override the window's controls from here. is taking place close by. Once you've infiltrated it, get your bearings. I'm sure there must be floor plans somewhere. Understood. We need absolute focus on this one. If Ingram and Stuyvesant are alerted to our presence, we may lose them for good. We are so close, 47. Don't worry. They're not going anywhere. Enjoy the event. to talk to the partners directly make them understand why all of this is happening and that terminal gives me an idea there's a server room near the sheikh's personal reception if you can gain access to it we might be able to recover useful intel from it we'll have to work together to hack the system but it's our best shot Looks like the staff area could provide you with a viable route to the server room. There's quite a bit of security here. One moment. You ready for some more fresh air, 47?
news on the new guard signed a code name Pinky. I got word that he entered the building, but he hasn't reported for duty yet. Probably still down at the depot, getting his uniform. I just hope he's got his papers. Uh, excuse me? What are you doing here? Please, sir, I need you to stop. <laughs> And I will have to take you down if you don't comply. Second chance, my friend. Please surrender yourself. Okay, you're asking for it. Last chance. Live or die. You're dying today.
information on the possible suspect. He was caught.
Six, Mr. Ingram, who is the Royal Highness's guest, has requested no noise of any kind. Okay, but it means I'll work slower. I don't care. But... That fateful day finally arrived. Jeffrey, unknown to himself, was now under fates. That's your winning face. I'd hate to see you lose. We underestimated the Constant. Now he's a glorified desk clerk. He's not just after the money. He wants it all. We caught him once. We can do it again. And... Well, we're not the ones who let him escape. You still don't trust her. I don't like executive decision makers. Look. You don't have to follow her, you know? Soon, this will be over. Maybe it's time to think about the future. You have to face the possibility that there's no going back. If the ICA knows what you did... She'll make it right. She always does. We have a fix on Carlisle. Come on. We've got a plane to catch. I hope you like the rain, 47. Miss Burnwood. How did you... I have everyone's number. You really ought to know by now. You planned this. All of it. Don't be silly. I just played the hand I was dealt. We'll find you. You had me. Where'd that get you? We handed you an empire. 
tickets for the best. The partners were complacent, set in their ways. But power is more than just security. Providence can be an agent of change. Surely you understand. Or you will. Soon enough. She came home. Carlisle's lost an empire. You fall hard enough, and you tend to be reminded of what truly matters. So, the end of the line. You ready for this? Are you? Who will you be without a score to settle? I guess the world's most wanted fugitive will have to do. Alexa Carlyle is dead. According to the funeral invitation, that is. So naturally, it caused quite a stir when the late matriarch turned up at the breakfast table, alive and kicking. Carlyle, wisely sensing that her number is up, has emerged from exile to tie up loose ends and secure the Carlyle legacy. She may be a monster, but you have to admire her due diligence. Carlisle descends from an ancient line of warrior aristocrats. Her great-grandfather made a killing in the Second Opium War and established an empire in shipping, railroads, and newspaper publishing. While largely unknown to the public, the family still asserts its quiet dominance over global transport and logistics, media, and technology. Most senior of the partners, Alexa Carlisle, is cold as ice, tough as nails, and sharp as a razor. Incidentally, it was her late father who first brought the three families together after the end of World War II at this very house, meaning that this gentleman is the birthplace of Providence. It began here, and it ends here. Talk about poetic. One more thing. According to our intel, Carlisle keeps a case file on the constant, information that may be helpful in his recapture, so don't leave the estate without it. Right. Happy hunting, 47. See you on the other side.
Thornbridge Manor. The Carlisle family's home for countless generations. The Revenant Alexa Carlisle and her three adult children, younger brother Zachary, grandson and daughter-in-law, are all gathered to conduct Carlisle's sham funeral. Curiously, Carlisle summoned a famous London PI soon after arriving this morning, but his purpose at Thornbridge is yet unclear. Now, the target knows that you're coming, and her guard detail is top-notch. So Mr. Gray will secure their nearby field HQ and intercept all calls going in and out of the estate. Any appeal for backup is going to fall on very deaf ears. Good luck, gentlemen. That is Phineas Whitmer, the famous private investigator hired by Madame Carlyle this morning. I'm curious why he's here. Maybe you should do some detecting yourself, 47. Mr. Whitmer, thank God you're here. Can I take you to Madame Carlyle? Yes, please. If you'd follow me. I know I oughtn't say anything, but I'm so relieved you're here. Everything's just so strange. Preparing for Madame's funeral, and then she turns up alive. But then the awful business with her brother Zachary, and, and all this security. I've never seen the place guarded like this, and, and, and I dare say I don't like it at all. Looking good today, sir. I will have to pat you down you if you're coming this you way, You have to sir. be patted down before you see Madame Carlyle inside. Oh, I could just cry. I think you are coming on a little too strong, mister. Mr. Whitmer, thank you for coming on such short notice. A great tragedy has fallen upon us, and I need a quick resolution, handled with absolute discretion. Results and discretion are my speciality. Very well. I suppose you will want to start at the crime scene. In my experience, a thorough examination of a potential crime scene is half the job done. Good. Fernsby will take over from here. I am Mr. Fernsby, the butler. Madame Carlyle has asked me to assist you in any way possible. Mr. Whitmer, I understand that you've traveled from London. 
Would you care for some refreshments? Or do you prefer to go straight to Mr. Zachary's sleeping quarters? I prefer to get started. As you wish. If you'll follow me, sir. I feel obliged to point out that current affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that the staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madam's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. So please bear with them if they seem affected by the rather unusual situation. I trust I do not need to remind you that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madam Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside, and a suicide letter was found in his room. However, Madame Carlyle suspects foul play and will not accept that he took his own life. Aaron Ford Jr. calling from Morgan Yates and Cone. I need to get a listing of asset transfers from the Carlisle account HTC Depot number 5085. Uh, no, I need it immediately. Yes, I'll hold. Yes, I'm still here. It doesn't exist. What do you mean it doesn't exist? I'll double check and get back to you. Don't hit! Don't This all confirms that Arthur Edwards stole everything from Madame Carlyle. Perhaps you should let her know how bad it is, 47. Room murder mystery 47. I trust you'll get to the bottom of this. Zachary's suicide note. Also, a sample of handwriting. It could be relevant to compare to other samples to establish its authenticity. Zachary was shopping for New Wellingtons last night. Not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal. Why don't you use your camera to scan the dead body, 47? Throat markings indicate a rare, short-lived plant poison killed him. Spread shows time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. You do know your poisons, 47. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside. Hmm. 
photocopy of the floor plans. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. I believe you've done a thorough search of the crime scene, 47. Maybe it's time to see the butler. I'm curious about the information he's prepared for you. Yes, actually. Could you speed up time so I don't die from boredom? I fear I may not survive an entire weekend of this shit. Oh, I have to risk walking I said speed up time, not my passport. How can you have a way with me? Of course, not. I'll come back later. How very kind of you, Mr. Brunsby. I hope to see you soon. Nothing you will get. How's everything coming along? Really? Very well, Mr. Burnsby. Make sure you focus on your work. I will. I don't need one more minute to cry. So 41 guests will attend a funeral tomorrow. There's still a lot to see to, but we're in good time, I think. I might bring more tomorrow. Zachary found dead upstairs. He's like, dead everywhere. I'll never
work with a lot of high profile celebrities, right? Much rather you use to. Mr. Fernsby, I'm done with the crime scene. Did you establish a time of death? Zachary died around 10 o'clock last night. Well, that means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive until this morning. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only persons here when he died. And before you ask, no, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here is the material that I prepared for. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case, and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. Mr. Fernsby? Mr. Whitmer, you have enough evidence to present your case for Madame Carlyle? No, not yet. Come and see me when you do. So how does one solve a murder mystery, 47? Motive means an opportunity, I believe. May I suggest you ask the suspects for alibis? Or perhaps do you prefer searching the manor for clues first? That is the door to Mr. Fernsby's office. Did all the groceries arrive? I heard some of the delivery people were unhappy with the security at the gate. But that is safe with Ethel. She never misses a step, gossiping and work both. I'm getting a headache from all the decisions. I mean, pram or stroller, comfort... Rosie, tell me what you did last night. I'm in trouble, aren't I? I... I spent the evening with Patrick. We met after dinner and I went home at one in the morning. He said he needed someone real to talk to. When he looks at you, it makes you feel like the center of the universe, like a real princess. But now he just ignores her. Well, he's under a lot of pressure. He's an idiot, that's what he is. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary? Any strangers outside the house? No. No, we saw no one outside, except Patrick's mother, Emma. We were sitting on the bench behind the greenhouse talking when she came out and um, we had to hide. You won't tell her about me and Patrick, will you? She'd insist Madame Carlyle fire me. I'm sure of it. Do right, she will. She's always going on about how things will change once she's in charge of Thornbridge Manor. Oh, no, I have... It's going to be a tag. You'll be fine, Robbie. It's a great... I'm not thinking about Emma all the time, but she just makes me so angry. 
Tell me. She turned up and demanded to be put up in Madame Carlyle's bedroom. We're the new head of the family office. led by example rather than by words and meaningless gestures. Professor Edward Carlyle, can you tell me your whereabouts for last night? Oh, yes, this dreadful business, Miss Zachary. I stay at the local inn. You see, I prefer not to spend the night here at Thornbridge Manor. My brother Gregory came along for a nightcap. He'll never admit it, but I think he understands that I find this whole thing upsetting and wanted to provide some comfort. I believe we went to the Stag's Head around half past eight. If that's all, I have a speech to write. Can you tell me about Zachary's behavior last night? I certainly didn't expect him to commit suicide. Sure, he was upset by Mother's supposed death. You were. But he seemed more engaged than usual. You should ask Rebecca, they had a long talk. Did you know that he hadn't left Thornbridge Manor in nearly 50 years? His plants, mother, and the star were all the company he had. Anything else I can do to help? Did you notice anything else out of the ordinary? You mean apart from the fact that we came here to bury our mother and she shows up alive and kicking? Zachary found dead in his bed this morning? Or perhaps that the planned funeral is still taking place and I have to do the eulogy? And mother will surely have strong opinion on it afterwards. I can't breathe. Like hugs for encouragement. Just a simple spontaneous caress, what a difference that would have made. Right. I clearly remember when I was five. I climbed a tree and could not make my way down. I was scared and called out for help. Of all people, you heard me, and when you saw me, you climbed a tree. I was relieved to help but find me a Emmer Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. Everyone can attest to that. I believe I went up when the boys sat down for a drink around 8 o'clock. Is that all? How did you feel about Zachary? I might as well be honest. His presence was always awkward. How do you have a meaningful conversation with a man who only cares about plants? In my opinion, Alexa bears some responsibility for how this ended. She supported his self-limiting behavior by letting him live here. Anything else you want to know? Have you noticed anything else out of the ordinary? Nothing special comes to mind. Except, perhaps, I did get a feeling that Zachary was depressed, not just sad. I suppose he realized that he had no one with Alexa gone. Even Alexa must feel the pangs of guilt over that one, letting him believe she was dead. Then again, guilt isn't her strong suit. Gregory Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. Well, um, I left Thornbridge around half eight for a pint with Edward. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> Quiz night at the inn. On the other hand, staying here with Zachary, my obnoxious sister, and the wife sporting another one of her headaches would have been a fate worse than death. 
Uh, the, the short of it, Zachary was very much alive when we left. I stayed for the last shout, and I was back here just before midnight. Anything else you want to pry? Tell me about Zachary. Zach? Huh. Such a sad old sod. A bit heavy on the bottle. But who could blame him? The only company he had was his rare plants and mother, who travels more than she stays here. Honestly, I can't say which is the bigger bore. He's better off dead. Is that all? Not very th Anything else you'd like to tell me? Nothing, really. I'm just enjoying the show. Our perfect mother obviously fucked up, didn't she? Faking her own death. You know, she's explained nothing to us. I think she's scared to own up to her own mistake. Rebecca Carla, can you tell me about yesterday evening? We don't really see much of each other, my brothers and I. I suppose it takes our mother's funeral to bring us together, and even then, it's not like we sit on each other's laps. Now, let's see. Patrick, Gregory's son, disappeared straight after dinner. You know, I think he might be in some sort of trouble. Edward wanted to go as well, but Gregory convinced him to stay for a few drinks before they went off for a pint at the local at a quarter to nine. I swear Gregory enjoys Edward's discomfort over staying here. I had a conference call with my New York office at nine, so I spent three hours on my laptop in my room and went straight to bed afterwards. I don't know about Emma. She did act a bit strange. You know, I bet she was making lists for changes needing to be done once she gets her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Quite the shock she had when Mother arrived during breakfast. Is that everything, Mr. Whitmer? Tell me about Zachary. Did he act strange last night? You know, now you mention it, he was a lot more chatty than usual. He wanted to know about my connections in the publishing business. Apparently, a friend of his is writing a book, which strikes me as very peculiar. I didn't think he had any friends. If Anything else you feel like mentioning? I may be wrong, but I saw Mr. Fernsby, the butler, leave Zachary's room early this afternoon. And he seemed a bit startled when he saw me in the hallway. It's probably nothing. Oh, and one more thing. Please be kind to Edward. He can only take so much. Is that everything, Mr. Whitmer? I do have a lot to see to. Did you give the Fitzpatrick token to Madame Carlyle's daughter? Rebecca? Yes. She's insistent, that one. She kept asking all kinds of questions. Who had the other one? Why I gave it to her, that sort of thing. You did make sure she didn't see you give the other one to the butler? Oh, of course.
of interesting stories. Oh, I love to tell you. Mr. Fernsby, Mr. Whitmer, you have enough evidence to present your case for Madame Carlyle? No, not yet. Come and see me when you do. I received the Falk token for the Milton Fitzpatrick London Bank. Did I understand correctly that I should give it to Rebecca in case of your death? Exactly. She holds the other one. I want her to have the file on Arthur Edwards if I die. You're not fearful she'll be in trouble if she knows. She will start digging when she realizes things don't add up. Inevitably getting her in trouble. I'd rather she knew who she's up against. She's clever and resourceful. Who knows, maybe she'll be able to hit him where it hurts. But I don't want her to get involved prematurely. Hopefully she'll never have to get involved at all. That is the door to Rebecca's room. Did the portrait photographer check out? Verified his identity. Everything's in order. Gotta dig this place. Ancestral graveyard. Don Yates, Alexa Carlyle here. You need to explain yourself. 
I demand that you return my call ASAP. Sending a junior attorney is gross negligence of your responsibilities and will have consequences for your company and you personally as well. I will make sure of that. Mark my words. Peculiar icons above the safe. I wonder if they might be some sort of a code. Maybe have a look around the office, 47. A safe in Madame Carlyle's office. I bet that's where she keeps the file on Arthur Edwards. This is Cassandra Cox, Edward's ex-wife. I don't know what's going on at your house, but Edward is losing it again. Ew. Are there any outside?
interesting story. Oh, I'd love to tell you. but you need to talk to Anthony about that. Calm down. Yes, I understand. I'm sure we can come to some arrangement, but you really need to talk to Anthony. He's the man with the papers. Listen, you know who I am, who my grandmother is, was, right? Just relax. It'll be fine. You'll get your returns. Don't worry. Give Anthony a call, okay? Patrick Carlyle. Can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, shit, it's that sneaky butler, isn't it? He ratted me out. Elaine, give us some privacy, would you? Don't tell Mother, okay? She's really tense these days, and the last thing I need is more hassle. I took that pretty blonde, um, Rosie, uh, for an evening stroll. I, I mean... How the fuck am I expected to cope for an entire weekend in this shithole? I'm bored out of my mind. If that's all, I think I'll get back to my slow death by boredom. What did you think of Zachary? Oh, creepy as hell. No ambition. Imagine deciding to live in a museum. You know, father says Zachary and Alexi used to be two of a kind. He had a great future ahead of him. Then suddenly, he just gave up everything. What an idiot. Thank God daddy chose looks and brains over pedigree when he married mummy. I don't have to worry about the inbreeding so customary in these circles. So, is that it? Did you see anything suspicious last night? No. I reckon Zachary topped himself. I know I would have. Or perhaps Mr. Fernsby. I don't like him. He could have done it.
long inside. Get everything ready for tomorrow. Tomorrow. Zachary found four. Mary is so upset, as she's never seen a dead body before. Life can be tough sometimes. And that detective asked to come here. Madame Carlyle must believe Zachary was murdered. Why else ask him to snoop around? Everywhere. Got to be kidding me. No power, no point. Oh, Madame Carlyle will be furious. Uh, she expects the family photo to be done any moment now. I need this shoot to happen, okay? And I need it to be perfect. Can't we just... So, Madame Carlyle wants a picture taken. If you were to assist with the missing fuse, I'm sure the portrait would be one for the ages. Take a fuse from another fuse box? Oh. Uh. I guess we could do that. Good. Look, I'll finish setting up, and then we'll grab the fuse just before you call down the family. Good. Yeah, that's a good plan. that Annie gets to help the photographer. I'm the pretty one. But work, 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 that's all I get from Fernsby. Yeah. Frank is busting our ball down here too. I doubt that's true though. No, he was here when the safe in Madame Carlyle's office was repaired last week. Get the character to the ball.
I don't believe for a second that Zachary committed suicide. We'd only just run through his plan for the spring seedlings yesterday. Yes, sure. But he, he was upset. Madam Carlisle is on her way down for the family photo shoot. Let's see if any memorable moments will play out in front of the camera. Just in front of the fountain. Edward, you can't let Mother get to you like this. You always put a to her. How do you do it? I'm the youngest. I guess I just flew under the radar when it came to her attention. I don't think so. She really respects you. If you just stop right craving her approval, you're nearly 50, Edward. I know. I'm such a loser. But you're not. You're a professor, you're artistic, you've got your music. I mean, that's really something. It's not exactly expanding the Carlisle Empire, though. But thanks. That does help a little. Too busy for my taste. What is it now? She scolded Mary, but not in the best way. Painkillers. Lethal, if you use enough of them. But not the poison used to kill Zachary. Of course, Madame Carlyle doesn't know that. Are you considering to frame the butler, 47?
Zachary's diary. This is big. He was about to confess to the world that he and Alexa murdered their older brother Montgomery 46 years ago. And apparently, Mr. Fernsby helped make the murder look like an accident. And 47, the handwriting doesn't match the suicide letter in his room, proving he didn't write it himself. Mr. Fernsby clearly didn't commit the murder, but I think you have enough evidence to convince Madame Carlyle he did. Maybe you should tell him you are ready to present your findings. Unless, of course, you want to do some more detecting, 47? Listen, Gregory. Something's off. Pruitt got word his motion was rejected. We all signed the bloody thing four days professional me to talk about that and I'll serve you Now, this is interesting, 47. A letter from Emma's mother stating that Emma is the illegitimate child of Alexa's late older brother, Montgomery. And listen to this. She claims to have witnessed Alexa and Zachary murder him. The plot thickens.
A keychain pendant for the greenhouse. What's that doing in Emma and Gregory's room, I wonder? And why is the key missing? Make the move, Alpha Chief. Neutralize this target now. I can see from the log that Rebecca was in a conference call from 9 p.m. to midnight last night. I'm ready to present my conclusion. Very well. Let's talk in my office.
please. Go ahead. The butler, Mr. Fernsby, killed Zachary. Fernsby? Oh, you've got that wrong. He would never do such a thing. He is the... Please remain seated, Mr. Whitmer. Thank you. Now, where were we? Fernsby? Oh, you've got that wrong. He would never do such a thing. He is the most loyal man I have ever met. I found pills in his office that matches the poison that killed your brother. Furthermore, I found Zachary's notebook, half-burned, in Mr. Fernsby's fireplace. It showed that Zachary intended to publish a written confession to a murder the two of you committed nearly 50 years ago. The murder of your older brother, Montgomery. That's outrageous. We did no such thing. No need to feign innocence. I know a killer when I see one, and my discretion is assured. The papers also described how Mr. Fernsby helped you stage the murder of Montgomery as an accident. I believe he killed Zachary not to be exposed as an accomplice to murder. Sweet Fernsby. Hmm. You are wrong, Mr. Whitmer. He did not do it to protect himself. He did it to protect the Carlisle legacy. Mr. Fernsby like myself, understands that sacrifices must be made to secure stability and prosperity. Mr. Whitmer, I'd appreciate it if your findings never leave this room. I understand Fernsby's actions, and there is no need for them to have more consequences than they already have. Fernsby was very fond of Zachary, and I am sure his decision will haunt him to the day he dies. About your reward, have you considered an amount? I want the file you have on Arthur Edwards. Arthur Edwards? The Constant? But that must mean you're... <sighs> I expected you'd show up. But you're not here to kill if you were, you would have already. The enemy of my enemy, I suppose. You can have it. You earned it. Where are you going? Right. Good Where work, 47. We? That's the file on Arthur Edwards secured. Time to take care of Madame Carlyle. The file you want is in the safe. Good hunting. I need some privacy. Thank you.
Mission complete. Well done, 47. Seven. They're everywhere. Go, get out! It's the Constantine! Shit! 